Hi everyone, this is Adam Woodworth and welcome to my very quick introduction to uh, exposure blending in Photoshop. Uh, currently it's November 2013 and recently I published a tutorial called Introduction to Landscape Astrophotography in which I go over the uh, tools and techniques that I use to capture images of the night sky where both the uh, foreground and sky are, are well exposed and in focus. And one of the um, key parts to doing this is to take multiple exposures at different focus distances and or exposure settings and then blend them together in Photoshop to create the final image. Um, the reason you need to do this is that quite often you're exposing for the sky at a very high ISO, maybe 2000, ISO 2000 or 3200 for maybe 25, 30 seconds. And the foreground is just simply going to be out of focus and dark because you're usually shooting at f2.8 and focus for the sky. Um, so most of the time in order to get the foreground uh, cleanly exposed and in focus, you're going to need to pull the focus in and take multiple or at least one or more exposures of the foreground at different focus settings and or exposure settings and then blend those together in Photoshop. So you can read more about uh, the techniques and gear I use in the tutorial, which you can find on the uh, luminous-landscape website at luminous-landscape.com. It's under their articles, essays menu. You should be able to find it in there. And it's also over on my blog, blog.adamwoodworth.com. And you can find it on the accuweather.com astronomy blog. So. What I want to do is just sort of quickly go over um, some blending techniques for a couple images, and specifically this image and this image. Um, this was taken in New Hampshire uh, in probably February, and this was taken in Vermont in the beginning of October. Um, so let's go over the uh, the fact that I have multiple exposures here, first of all, for this image. Um, this is the sky exposure, which was at ISO 3200 for 20 seconds. Uh, and this is the uh, foreground exposure, where I pulled the focus in and exposed at ISO 1600, so a lower ISO, for uh, two minutes. And like I said, the reason to do that is to get the foreground um, exposed, uh, uh, well exposed, so it's cleaner, it's brighter, and um, pulling the focus in brings the rocks and uh, into more focus compared to the sky exposure where the uh, focus was set at infinity. So the sky is in focus, but the rocks aren't very much in focus at all, and they're very dark because uh, it's only a half minute, a well, 20 second exposure at SO3200. So I'm going to take these photos and blend them together. So you can do this by highlighting the photos you want to bring into Photoshop. Go to Edit In and go to Open as Layers in Photoshop. Now this can take a few minutes or a few seconds or so to happen, so I've already opened it in Photoshop. And here we are. So um, just to note that um, I'm not going to go over all the details of how to do a sort of start to finish work on these photos. I'm hoping to do that in a maybe future tutorial. But um, I just want to go over a quick way to uh, blend some photos together so you can get the sky and foreground um, blended into a single image. And it's also important to note that before I came into Photoshop, I did all my uh, basic processing of these images in Lightroom, such as uh, chromatic aberration and other lens corrections like vignetting, um, distortion if you uh, need to do that, um, l uh, rotating, cropping, uh, getting the horizon level, um, maybe highlights and basic exposure adjustments, and sharpening. You really want to make sure that you do your initial sharpening in Lightroom so that you can pull the masking slider up and get rid of uh, sharpening on the sky. Um, and I go over that a little more in tutorial. You can go to the tutorial, um, the written tutorial, and look for um, some of the Photoshop or uh, basic editing techniques. And I go over the sharpening a little bit in there. Anyways, back to Photoshop. Um, so this is a simple blend because there's only two exposures. It's the sky and the foreground. And um, 
if you have multiple foreground exposures, it gets more complicated. You know, you'll need to align those images because every time you change focus, the uh, lens breathes and the scene will change a little bit uh, where the rocks are from, you know, one exposure focus point on a lens to another focus on point in the lens, the actual uh, resulting images will look a little different and you'll have to line them up and you can usually do that by selecting the images, uh, like the layers that you need to align and going to uh, edit auto align layers and that'll bring up dialogue and you can usually select auto and just sort of let it figure it out um, but there's these other options, sometimes reposition works better um, the downside is that uh, sometimes the movement in the stars between the exposures can trick Photoshop and cause it to try to align the stars together and then your image will end up being warped and sort of rotated. Um, there are sort of ways around that um, that I might go over in a few tutorial, but this is a crash course tutorial. I just want to go over blending these two exposures together. Um, so let's see. The sky, let me zoom in here and give you a better sort of overview as to uh, the um, noise and, you know, out of focus that we're dealing with. This is the sky exposure. And with the foreground exposure, you can see that the foreground is in much better focus. But you'll see over here that these rocks on the side and that rock and that rock, they're actually still out of focus. And that's because the tide was coming in. And I simply just didn't have enough time to take another exposure before the tide was going to come in and, and um, cover my camera and tripod and me. So I just have two exposures. So the easiest way to blend uh, an image like this is to try using the gradient tool to create a mask that will reveal the sky part from the sky exposure and reveal the foreground from the foreground exposure. So you select the sky layer, add a layer mask to it, and then grab the gradient tool. Um, and with white paint, we can draw a gradient that will um, have white on the sky on this layer mask for the sky exposure. Now, if you aren't familiar with layer masking, um, it's a pretty crucial uh, technique for blending photos together in Photoshop. And there are lots of tutorials out there already on this topic, so if you just Google for layer masking Photoshop, you should probably find plenty of tutorials on layer masking. But the uh, gist of it is that white parts of a layer mask reveal the, la the current layer, and black parts hide the current layer, which means that layers underneath the current layer will be revealed. And gray tones, everything in between black and white, will blend the two layers or multiple layers together, um, which means that the layer, the active layer where the layer mask is, um, a light gray color will reveal the current layer a lot, whereas a dark gray color will reveal it a little bit, and blend it, and ex reveal the um, underlying layer more. But there's plenty of tutorials on layer masking that you can go look up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the gradient tool. And it's going to take a little practice to get this right, you know, your first few times, and especially on any new image that you're working on. But if you hold down the shift key while you're dragging, it'll create a straight line for you. And there we go. We have a basic blend. Um, it might not be the best blend, um, but it is a starting point. In fact, if we zoom in, we can see that the uh, rocks and the horizon still aren't very well blended in. So what if I dragged up a little before, a little above the clouds and dragged down a bit? Maybe we'll get a little bit better. Oh, it didn't change too much. But if we do that, you can see that the f rocks are a little more um, from the foreground or are revealed more up there. And if we go up higher, you know, you're just going to take some, oh, that looks pretty good. If we, we were going to just take some um, time experimenting to get the uh, blend right. So couple other things you're probably noticing. This line, uh, this uh, light streak here is from a boat on the horizon that moved throughout the uh, two minute exposure for the foreground. Uh, this is an airplane trail up here that was in the 20 second exp sky exposure and that's another airplane exposure uh, trail over there. We can get rid of those with general 
you know, cloning and healing tools in Photoshop. That's not a big deal. Um, the bright light on the horizon over here is from the sun getting close to the horizon to the point where it was, you know, caught, it, you could see the light from the sun in a long exposure. Um, it was still quite a ways before sunrise, so there's not a lot of color, you know, the, and the sky is actually pretty dark above the horizon. And this light over here on the right is from cities down in Massachusetts um, that you can s uh, like light pollution from towns down on Cape Ann. Um, all right, so we have this blend, this basic blend, but how do we, we have this problem over here where this rock is sticking up into the sky or above the horizon, so it's actually, um, the blending isn't good on this rock because it's the top part is hidden, uh, the top part of the foreground exposure is hidden. So with a brush tool, you can just go in with white paint and, oops, that's not very good. Uh, actually, with black paint, because we want to hide this uh, layer, the foreground, the um, sky layer, which is the underexposed layer for the foreground, and reveal the bottom layer, which is the foreground exposure. So with black paint on the mask, we can reveal the rock, uh, the in-focus rock. And usually I want to use a low opacity brush and sort of feather it in, especially when you get to these edges here. Um, if you start painting with a high opacity brush, especially if you don't have a hard uh, soft edge on it, it's just not going to blend very easily. And zooming in definitely helps um, to see where your um, edges are. But if you're just sort of gentle with it and take your time and practice, it's going to take some practice to sort of get good at this. But you can sort of do a basic blend like that um, by hand to fix some of that stuff. So there you go. That's a very simple exposure blend. And the rest of the work in the image would be to sort of feather out the exposure blend a little bit, like maybe you know, clean up the rock blend a little bit more. Um, just make sure there's no weird blending problems in the sky. Um, I'll do that by hand. And then the rest of that would, rest of the work and image would be the sort of creative process and, you know, a, a balancing exposure and uh, contrast and saturation and uh, sharpness and all the normal stuff that you might do to uh, make an image sort of come to life. Um, for this image, you can see that I actually must have brought the exposure up quite a bit in uh, Photoshop to get the sky a little brighter, and, which can help clean it up a little bit. Um, but obviously, I would want to bring that sky down a bit in exposure and put some more contrast in it. It's kind of washed out right now. But that's all just part of the process of uh, finalizing an image. So the next image that I want to work on is uh, this guy. Um, the resulting image is this. And that's after all the work I did to um, blend the photo, but then do contrast and saturation and you know all the normal stuff. Um, this image consists of two exposures. The sky is 25 seconds at ISO 3200, f2.8. And the foreground is from a 10 minute exposure at f2.8 at ISO 1000. And I should mention that all these photos are taken with a Nikon D800D with the Nikon 14 to 24 millimeter lens that I'm almost always for night photography use at 14 millimeters at f2.8. Um, and this one, since the foreground was just water and some weeds and stuff, I didn't ch actually change the focus on the um, lens for the foreground because the bridge was in pretty good focus at uh, the infinity mark but I just took a longer, a much longer exposure at a lower ISO so that I could get a clean exposure for the foreground. And you can see that there's some wind, the trees are moving around a little bit, but that's okay. Um, I don't mind that. Um, so back in Photoshop, the um, this one's a little bit tricky to blend because you can't, you know, a gradient is going to result in this bridge um, being half exposed and half not exposed. Um, and the trees as well. So what I did was to use an advanced form of luminosity masking to blend in the bridge and the trees uh, into the sky. 
Uh, now, you could just leave the image as is, not use a foreground exposure. You'd have this nice silhouette of the bridge, and you have a reflection in the pond, and that works pretty well. But I wanted detail on the bridge and foreground, and I wanted to make it glow, sort of, you know, like bring some detail into there. So the way I went about doing this blend uh, was, like I said, use luminosity masking. And luminosity masking is a whole other topic in itself that's um, sort of beyond... It's like a more advanced form of basic layer masking. And you can find out a lot more about it at goodlight.us, where you can download and purchase the um, luminosity masking actions that I use. But also, you can there's tutorials on using luminosity masks by Tony Kuiper. And over at Sean Bagshaw's website, Outdoor Exposure Photography, there's a very good video tutorial on luminosity masks and in that tutorial he goes over how to use uh, there's at least one or two chapters on using luminosity masks for blending in multiple images together so uh, that's what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna go over this fairly quickly um, you'll probably want to go read some more about luminosity masking to understand everything but um, I want to generate a luminosity mask that has the bridge very well separated from the sky. And I'd use the foreground exposure to help that. Because uh, the bridge, the sky is very bright in the foreground exposure, the bridge is still kind of dark. But I want to make the mask pretty um, solid so that the bridge is as dark as it can be, so as black as it can be, and the sky is as white as it can be, so I can make the blend. Um, a nice sharp blend there on the bridge. So I brought in a layers level right above, I hid the uh, sky level and then above the foreground level created a layers level and just bring in the bright, uh, the white point to make the sky even brighter and bring in the black point and cr crush the bridge down to deep black and then go over the channels layer and if you command click on the RGB layer, you'll get a luminosity selection that you can then save to a mask. I'm gonna deselect that. And now here's the mask. So I can use this mask to reveal the sky and uh, reveal to reveal the uh, sky and the sky exposure and reveal the bridge from the bridge exposure. Um, there's a couple ways to do that. And one basic way is to load that mask, which I command click on the mask on the channel, and then I'm going to actually hide those ants. And you're going to need to get rid of the uh, levels after creating that mask. Oops, did something wrong. Hold on. Get rid of that. Go back over here, load the channels mask, uh, the layer mask, hide those ants, back over to layers tab. Now I'm going to reveal the sky um, layer and click on the layer mask icon which will create a layer mask with that luminosity selection that I have loaded. And you can see that you know the bridge is now revealed and the, s and the s sky and the pond are kind of messy looking, but if we paint on the mask, kind of like in the previous example, we can g get rid of the problems with the mask. We can just paint with 100% uh, oops, painting the wrong color. Paint 100% white on the sky exposure mask and just get rid of the weirdness that kind of came in from that luminosity mask. And oops, too much on there. And same thing over here. Um, I kind of didn't really blend in a whole lot of the uh, water from the foreground because I wanted those pinpoint star reflections. But um, then you would need to go in and sort of feather out these trees with a lower opacity mask. You know, you can zoom in and kind of fix this stuff up. Um, just be patient, like with the uh, other image. You know, it'll take some time to sort of figure out how to do this. But the way I did it was a little different. So I'm going to get rid of this layer mask and then create a new empty one. And I'm going to go over to the channels uh, panel 
and select the mask that I'd created earlier. And I'm actually going to invert it, Command I. And now the bridge is white and the uh, sky is black. And that will help me. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to load this selection, load this lunar masking mask as a selection, and then hide those ants. And go over here, make sure the layer mask for the uh, sky is, is selected. I'm going to use black paint to paint on the bridge. And I can paint um, across the bridge into the sky, and it's not going to affect the sky because I have that luminosity mask loaded that has the sky as black and the bridge as white. And when you have a luminosity mask loaded when you're painting with a paintbrush, the areas that you'll paint on are only going to be the areas that are white in the mask. So it gets a little confusing, but I have a I have the bridge revealed in white for the um, mask to constrict my painting, but I'm actually going to paint with black on the bridge because I want to hide the bridge, the uh, dark bridge in the um, sky exposure, and reveal the bright bridge on the underlying layer. So I'm going to use 50% opacity. I could even use 100% opacity on this, and just paint right on the bridge into the sky, and you can see that the sky isn't being affected. I'm revealing the bridge only. And this will take some, you know, practice getting used to. It's a kind of a complicated um, tool, complicated technique. But you can do it to reveal the bridge. You can reveal um, these trees in the same way. Um, and the, uh, bring the opacity down a little bit, reveal the uh, horizon. Um, you can see that there's some sort of dirtiness along these trees, which you can go back and sort of hide. You have to feather out the edges um, manually. But if you just practice at it, and you'll figure out how to do it. Um, it just takes a lot of patience. But back to the bridge over here, you can see that there's a pretty good blend here. You know, the sky and the bridge, they're very clean blend. But there is this little... Um, halo you can sort of hear, see here, and we can f fix that in a second, but just to give you an example of how you'd go around maybe exposing the uh, foreground a bit more, um, the banking around the pond here, the shore, um, kind of just manually doing, you know, exposing what I want as opposed to the other method where I expose sort of everything for the mask and then had to get rid of what I didn't want. And because that mask is so good, I can even use it on this fence here and get that exposed. And you can see all this sort of weirdness again. You'll just need to go through it and sort of manually blend out these halos. Um, but that's the gist of it. And to get rid of this halo problem up here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom in a bit so I can see the halo better. Use a smaller brush low opacity. Well, actually, I'll go to two up on that. Um, and then I'm going to Command D to deselect the uh, luminosity mask that I had uh, constricting my painting. And I'm just going to use white paint to reveal the sky exposure, which will be the darker part of this bridge. And just get rid of that halo. You can actually click once and then hold down the shift key and then click again and draw a straight line with the brush. Very handy. And pretty much just get rid of that halo. Um, you probably can see a little bit of it still zoomed in so much here. Actually, let me get rid of this corner down there a bit. Um, but once you go back out to a normal zoom level, it's pretty much invisible. But, you know, some more more patience and feathering with that would help get rid of the halo entirely. So that's uh, the basic gist of it with that sort of advanced luminosity um, blending. And the rest of it, like the other image, would just be doing your normal image editing, contrast, saturation, all that kind of stuff. Now for particularly difficult blends of a photo where you might have a whole bunch of exposures for the foreground, um, it can sometimes be useful to use a automated way to blend the foreground and the sky. 
And it doesn't work very well on tricky blends like this. I find that um, it, it tends to get confused. But Photoshop does have this auto, um, whoops, let me select some layers so I can at least show you the uh, dialog box. Auto blend layers under the edit menu. And you select stack images, seamless tones and colors, and Photoshop will try to blend the layers together to create a single image where the um, everything is in focus and the uh, exposures are even. Um, that's very useful on an image where you might have a whole bunch of ex um, exposures for the foreground, you know, maybe two or six or seven uh, different exposures for the foreground where you kept pulling in the focus to get closer and closer and closer to the camera. Um, that can work very well for those images. And if Photoshop's auto blend doesn't work, you can try a couple other standalone tools. Uh, Helicon Focus by Helicon Soft at HeliconSoft.com um, and Zerine Stacker at ZerineSystems.com. Now, I haven't used Zerine Stacker, but I have used and own Helicon Focus. And I've used it for a few of um, very complicated focus stacks, and it works quite well. And I hear Zerine Stacker works well too. Um, but sometimes Photoshop's auto blend works the best. So it's really it's going to be a matter of, um, if you have a hard blend like that, it's going to be a matter of just sort of playing around the tools and see what works best for your uh, photo. So I guess that's it for this introduction um, to exposure blending. You can go check out the uh, tutorial, my written tutorial again, if you haven't already, and learn more about the, the um, gear and techniques that I use. And I'm hoping to put together a more uh, extensive tutorial for sort of a start to finish workflow in the future. Um, you can also go over to my website, adamwoodworth.com, to see my work. And my uh, Facebook page is Adam Woodworth Photography. And you can go to, uh, I also have a Google Plus page, of course. Where is that? Um, Google Plus, um, Adam Woodworth on Google Plus. So there you go. Um, I hope this tutorial was useful for you, and I will see you next time.